everybody. How y'all doing today? Good. Good. Hanging in there. good, good. It's good to see you all. My name is Brad Gray. I am uh, the Director of Innovation at WTHR in Indianapolis. It's the NBC affiliate. Uh, we're the 25th largest market. I'm sure those of you who are interested in going into any level of local TV news, you've had had to go through the whole market conversation of, you know, low market, mid market, high market, we'd be considered eh, mid high, right? So uh, 25 to 30 around like Nashville, Columbus and Charlotte and stuff like that. So um, of course, got my start right here at Ball State, uh, taking classes like this, um, just like with Dr. Maria. Uh, I am an Indianapolis res or born and raised in Indianapolis, West Side, Ben Davis High School, uh, Ball State, Worked at the ABC affiliate when I graduated, uh, then went to um, Atlanta, uh, worked in Atlanta for five years, then in Chicago, worked in Chicago for about two years, and now back in Indianapolis for, it'll be two years in July. So, um, been able to bounce around a little bit, had an opportunity to try some different things out, um, producing, reporting, digital stuff, running the desk. Um, pretty much anything, right? And being multifaceted, I know is something that we were taught when I was in school. Um, and I know it's something that they continue to teach now, uh, those skills, uh, regardless of how much the industry changes, uh, will always make you more marketable, more versatile, and are gonna matter as you uh, progress in your career. And it doesn't matter if you stay in media, if you decide to move away from media, if you get into content creation, you wanna do digital, you wanna do marketing, you wanna do whatever it may be, being multifaceted, being versatile, uh, definitely secures uh, your ability to, to work. Uh, unless you are becoming an entrepreneur, then it really helps you because now you're making your own money and you know how to do everything, right? So um, that, that is a little bit about me. Uh, I actually want to do it a little different this time. Uh, I want to play a game. And no, this isn't Saw. I don't have a little jigsaw thing coming through the door, right? Uh, I need a volunteer. One. First hand. Okay. What's your cash app? Do you have one? I do have a cash app, yeah. All right. Can you pull it out? There you go. Okay. I want it on record. Students do not have to pay money to no. take this class. Uh, pull, pull the, uh, your, uh, okay. cue. Yep. I think he's paying me, actually. All right. It's 20 bucks. Yeah. For lunch. Okay. Lesson number one. The person who volunteers, the person who goes first gets to set the standard, right? Do you have to do anything for that 20 bucks? Do I have to do anything? Uh, well, it's for lunch, so I've got to go get lunch. You're going to get, what did you have to do for the 20 bucks, though? What did I have to do? I had to raise my hand, and I volunteered and stepped right up. The person who goes first always sets the standard, right? There's always a reward for the person that goes first. That's the only thing that you guys, if you remember anything from what I say, remember that. He gets to set the standard. I have worked uh, multiple positions in my career. You have to see. I'm sorry, what's your name? Uh, Daniel. Daniel, Brad, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, so... Uh, I've mo worked multiple positions in my career, and every single one of those positions has been a position that was created, okay? Uh, every position that I plan to take uh, from now until I retire is something that does not exist now. Uh, when I went to Atlanta, uh, the position was considered a multi-platform producer. And the idea was, what is a multi-platform producer? Well, it's a producer that does everything. So, hey, can you run the desk? Sure. Hey, can you... Um, can you go out and shoot this bow stop for me? Sure, why not? Hey, okay, cool, you did a good job with that. Can you go out and shoot this package for me? Cool. Uh, we got this live shot that needs to be ran. Can you do the live shot? Yeah, of course. Hey, do you have any interest in uh, digital producing? No, but I'll do it. Okay, learn how to digital produce. Putting all these different things together, you just continue to build and build and build and grow skills, right? Never say no to the opportunity to learn things. And then it became, okay, well, hey, do you have a fear of heights? No. Do you want to get up in a helicopter and shoot uh, for the different events? Yeah, absolutely. July 4th, biggest 10K in the world. Uh, can you shoot the F-16s that are coming across uh, and, and, and time it out so that we get it and we can, we can you know, cut that in our live broadcast? Yeah, absolutely. Emmy Award winning content, right? Hey, do you like sports? 
course. Hey, do you want to do uh, the Super Bowl? Do you want to meet Tom Brady? Do you want to, you know, be there when the Rams and the Patriots play? Yeah, absolutely. So I got to cover a Super Bowl, right? And this is all from one position that was essentially a what used to be called the assignment desk, right? And they changed the position based on the ability of me being able to say no to nothing, okay? And when I say say no to nothing, I'm not saying don't have boundaries, I'm not saying don't set your expectations, I'm not saying do anything for free. What I'm saying is, is that when an opportunity presents itself, when you can showcase your skills, you absolutely have to take it. And all it takes is raising your hand when somebody asks. I was just the first. That's Lesson number one. All right, got to get another volunteer. Oh, look at the hands now, right? <laughs> there, I saw, saw your hand first with a rat pack, yeah. Come on. <laughs> What's your name? Nate. Nate. Brad, nice to, nice to meet you. All right, Nate, what you're going to do, you're going to build this puzzle for me, okay? <laughs> Nate, on, are you a puzzle guy? We'll see. All right. So, ooh, and this, you know what, this might, I only need one. I only need one. So this is what we're going to do, actually. I'm going to, let me erase this first. Because I don't want to, This these markers are not going to be good uh, for that. So, all right. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna write a graph on the board, okay? I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to look at it, now I'm gonna do, erase it, and then you're gonna replicate it, okay? Okay. All right. So, all right. I need a count of 10 after I flip this over, okay? Best wishes. This is not Have at it. I would almost say that y'all can help him out, but none of y'all are get none of y'all are gonna get it, so All right, y'all helping them too much.
All right, so I've done this puzzle for, hmm, I don't know, 15, 15, 16 years. No one's ever gotten this close, ever, first time. Still wrong, but no one's ever gotten this close. Which, which, which part do you think is wrong? I think these three. One of these. Okay. Well, let's, let's start here. First off, thank you. You're not getting any money, but thank you. Uh, what, what inspired you to volunteer when I asked for volunteers? Seemed like it might be fun. Was it, did it have anything to do with the fact that I offered them 20 bucks for lunch? I mean, it seems this is interesting. This is the most interesting press conference. Well. Sure. Okay. All right. Part of, and lesson two, never follow the first person because he had no expectations. I didn't set any expectations for him. The second person <laughs> has to take the flack of everything that he doesn't get right, plus the added expectations of what I need, right? So when you don't set the bar for yourself, you fall under the impression and under the expectations of the person that came before you, right? Now that most jobs are going to have somebody, most careers are going to have somebody that existed beforehand, right? It still doesn't change the fact that if you do not define expectations for yourself, and you jump into something that is not brand new, you run the risk of having to do something that you have no idea what's being asked of you. Um, a lot of you guys I know follow the news. A lot of you guys understand what's been happening in the tech industry, right? Tech industry was one of those industries that got bloated uh, in the middle of the pandemic. You saw stock prices rise for companies like Zoom, companies like uh, Facebook, Meta, um, PayPal, Square, all these different places started looking for young talent uh, to help boost their digital, their online, their whatever it may be, right? Everyone got to work from home. What was the big thing on TikTok? I don't know if for y'all it was the big thing on TikTok, but everybody wanted to do their day in the life of a tech influencer, right? Where are those people now? Back in class with the rest of y'all because they need something else to do because those jobs don't exist anymore, right? What ends up happening is once the expectation has been set, once the money started rolling in, and it's like, okay, here's what we have, here's what we need, why do we have these people, right? Why did we hire people that can do two hours of work and then go get coffee and then go to the gym and then go get whatever and then say that they're making however much money, right? Those positions, you'll never see it again. You'll never see it again. I'm sorry, I'm being, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't say never, but you'll probably never see it again, right? There's not gonna be an opportunity for us to make money in the way that we did in the pandemic. However, there are opportunities to learn from what happened in the pandemic and then take it to whatever you're doing next. Okay, now to your puzzle. How hard was it to try to put this together? And you got a little bit of help because you only had eight at first and somebody told you you need nine. So I saw that. I would have disqualified you, but again, it's a big class, y'all are fine. Um, what was your thought process going through this puzzle? At first, I was trying to see if there was anything like I could pick up on, mm -hmm. like that seemed similar. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't see anything that would be the same. Like right away, I couldn't. Yeah. But then that threw me off to the whole thing where I'm like, shoot, I just got to memorize what this is, and I, I don't have the best memory. Mm. Why do you feel you have to memorize it? Because I had 10 seconds. You had 10 seconds to, to, to look. Was there anything that you looked at specifically? Like you said, you, you know, you look for a pattern, whatever. Is, is there any pattern that you see here right now? No. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm going to erase it. No. Actually, correct. leave. Put the put the correct. Uh, oh, he's he's very he's very close. So here's 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 the original uh, legend here. So Yeah. 
Yeah, you just, you, you literally just flip those two. Like, I promise you, my heart was beating out of my chest because I was like, if he gets this, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I was like, oh, I've never had this happen before. No, um, you were really, really close. And it's literally just flipping four and six. Anybody got that? Now, again, you're looking at it. Does anybody see any type of pattern? Anybody see anything that may have helped them figure this out for themselves if you may have had to do this? Anything stand out? It is, it's L, U in various directions until you get to the middle point, which is a square, then it's back to the U, L pattern. Yeah. What do you see? It's these two create that one. These two, wait, no. These two create that one. These two create that one. These two create that one. Close. Very, 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 very close. Think a little harder a little harder on that because you're like a third of the way there you may be two-thirds of the way there that's also true but there's more to that Anybody else? Any 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 other thoughts? Um. Anybody? Uh, I know you. Everybody here is what under what twenty twenty two and under, for the most part. Damn y'all y'all didn't grow up with like, like landlines, like phone landlines. I mean, like when you were like babies, but y'all is but mostly cell phones. There's a. There's a pattern here. It's just. Uh. <laughs> pattern is, it's just a, it's just breaking up numbers and it's just, a, it's, it's the same pattern, except you're looking at it with the idea of it's segmented, but it's literally just phone pad. And it's just breaking up the phone pad to look at it in the sense of separating the numbers. Does that look or make sense to you? Does that make sense a little bit? Yes, no, maybe so, no. Kind of, yes and no. I know it's, it's, it's a little weird. The reason why I love this, and, and really lesson number three, uh, I'm a big fan of the show The Wire, again, around before many of you guys were born, but The Wire, the main line is all the pieces matter, right? All the pieces matter means is that the way we look at life, the way we look at our careers, the way we, we view college, we, we view experiences is we segment and separate it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Instead of understanding and seeing how the pieces fit together, the puzzle literally fits here, right? You could break this up and try to memorize it. You go through classes, you try to memorize for tests, you try to do things like that. You get a career, you try to memorize how your boss wants to do things or how uh, you, know, you were taught to do things and you segment and you segment and you segment. And the thing that's helped me out in my career and what's allowed me to become fairly successful in news is that I had to recognize how much things matter. I had to figure out how do I make one care about nine, which goes back to what you were saying about the the pieces, they're, they're literally the same, right? So when we think about this in the sense of like news and news coverage, right? Uh, anybody here from Indiana? What what parts? Yeah, that's a lot of y'all. So I'm from Fisher. Yuck. Huh? Shelby. Shelby. Shelby school. I like your casino. Okay, what, what part? West side. West side, best side. What's part? Yeah. West Lafayette, Franklin, Franklin. South Bend. Yeah. Who else? Fancy. Okay, hey, Fancy. Yeah. She's not Fancy. You, you Delaware County. Albany. Albany. Okay. Close enough. Carmel. 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 
Anybody else? E either way, how the question that you have to ask yourself when you're thinking about media and what makes all the pieces matter, how do I get Shelbyville to care about Indianapolis? How do I make Fishers care about Albany? How do I make West Lafayette care about South Bend? How do I make these pieces matter for this community? How do I tell a story that impacts all aspects of who I'm trying to reach, right? You guys are storytellers. You guys are avid storytellers at that, right? You have the attention span of ants. So you do these, you know, it's YouTube shorts, it's, it's TikToks, it's like these very short reels, right? I grew up in the era of two and a half minute news packages. I would get crucified if I tried to put a two and a half minute story on these days, right? So we had to learn how to tell stories in shorter amount of times. However, that short amount of time, I still need to be able to impact each and every one of you, right? So you have to continue to think as storytellers and what's gonna make you guys compelling storytellers as you get better is if you broaden out your horizon of instead of being so ultra focused on figuring out why this is this or why you know why this equals this or this equals that or why this is so important to Fishers or why this is so important to Shelbyville or this is so important to the West Side is to see how do I connect the people of the West Side to the people of the East Side? How do I connect the issues that are happening in Hamilton County and make them important to the people of Johnson County? How do I connect the people of Indianapolis and get them to care about the rural aspects of our state, right? How do I tell them about the problems that persist in the farmlands? How do I tell them about the problems that persist up in the region in Northwest Indiana, things that are happening on Lake Michigan and, and, and how that affects, maybe it affects my water, maybe it affects you know, people down in Evansville, maybe it affects people in Terre Haute. All the pieces matter, and when I say that, all the pieces matter, it is simply, how do I connect my community? That is your, that's the crux of what you're going to do as a storyteller, and I don't care what level or industry you're, you're going to get into, right? How do I make the broad impact of whatever story I'm trying to tell? Thank you very much. I'm sorry for your, you did a, you did a great job. So, anyway, again, this is this is fodder. This is fun. It probably doesn't even make sense. It made sense in my head. I don't know. It might not make sense in everybody else's head. But I know what does make sense, and what I know is very, very true, is that when I say that all the pieces matter and that it's about impacting your community, it is about connecting people. That is what communication is. It is a game of telephone. If we were to play telephone, just like you used to do in uh, kindergarten, that is essentially what you do on a wider scale in levels of mass media. So um, that is kind of all I wanted to talk about on my front, just to add for that advice. Uh, I know that typically you guys might have like questions. I know there's typically some type of assignment that you have to do uh, from things like this. So I wanna make sure that I am providing some level of value to you guys and what you need. So um, I am free and open to any type of questions. Starting to start here, and then we'll go to you. Danny Huber, IPR News. Uh, so you know, you said you've done production, recording, editing. You, your work ethic really made the show that you're a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. What made you develop that ethic, Dr. Maria? <laughs> um, no, she, uh, you, you know, here's the thing. Um, again, I, I grew up. I grew up watching two parents work at the post office: rain, sleet, hail, snow. Like. Some things are just ingrained in you, but then it's also one of those things where it's like, when you want to be good at something, and I know you guys are mostly sports, you understand the discipline that it takes for somebody like LeBron James to be who he is today, simply because no one's ever produced, right, the type of numbers that he's produced at the age that he is, right? Greatness, that level of, of that level of accomplishment comes from years and years and years and years of discipline. So the work ethic and, and wanting to be good at what I do comes from growing up watching sports and seeing people who were the best at their craft and what they used to do with it. I spend hours on YouTube watching like old Herschel Walker, Bo Jackson the training videos, right? Like like these like freaking behemoths yeah, they're genetically gifted, but like they put in work 
every single day, every single night, the way that they focus on their diets, the way that they focus on sleep patterns. And then, I mean, that's a lot different for you guys now. Uh, for me, becoming a, a wanting to do news was something I always wanted to do, but the work ethic was what really was molded by watching sports. It was watching people that were better at stuff that I was than I was, you know what I mean? And then emulating that. So, you know, if you want to be the LeBron James of your industry, you got to work like LeBron James. You know what I mean? You just kind of got to pass it along like that. So. Sure, absolutely. Um, <coughs> college is your first real experience of being away from home, and then your next experience may be your first job. Uh, I was lucky enough to get my first job in Indianapolis, but then there was an opportunity to move. Uh, when you move, you learn so much about yourself when you don't have family or friends and you kind of got to start from scratch. Uh, it's it's maybe, a little, maybe you got somebody from your hometown or somebody from your high school that, that came here to Ball State Maybe you knew your roommate, maybe you didn't. Maybe maybe you, this is something where it's like, no, nah, I'm the only person here. This is a very similar experience to um, making that that type of jump, uh, except there's no st structure. Like you guys have like food and <laughs> shelter and all that. In the real world, you're on your own, right? So you gotta, you gotta fend for yourself. Uh, when you move to you know these different markets, like moving to Atlanta, <laughs> I moved, I had a Chevy Impala, I drove my Impala, and that was all I had. You know what I mean? I had like, I had my fish tank, <laughs> I had like a clothes, I had like a, a, a basket full of clothes, and you know what I mean? We just, we got out the mud for a couple months and got into an apartment, and then, you know, from there it was, you know, it's just going from there. But it, it really does teach you a lot about like your self sufficiency, your independence. Um, it showcases that you really do have those things built in you and that that foundation begins uh, right here though. Um, so you know take advantage of this time to build up that that resistance to needing to call home a lot or needing to do whatever like you know you, when you're on your own like you're independent you, you get the opportunity to really grow and, and create and mold who you want to be. So um, take this opportunity in college to, to, to really expound on it. Uh, that's a great question. Um, so this is a little different because okay, getting to Indianapolis, I actually didn't apply for a job. It was divine intervention. I was Dr. Murray, do you know the story? I don't know. Maybe I, I was getting into an elevator. Uh, I was working at HH Gregg. That doesn't even exist anymore. I was slanging TVs when I got out of college, and I was working for a Ball State, um, it was a, a booth at this event, and I was getting ready to go to work, and I was getting on the elevator, and uh, it was closing, somebody held the door open, and it happened to be the, the HR director for the station that I interned at, who was standing right next to the new GM of the place <laughs> where I had never worked, or where, you know, where I would interned or whatever. So he was like, hey Brad, you know, remembered you from your internship, uh, have you got a job in, in news yet? I was like, nah. He was like, well, you know, this is, I want you to meet uh, Larry Blackerby was his name. And I literally had to do an elevator pitch in an elevator, right? Uh, and pitch myself to this man. And I was like, yeah, man, I'm looking for a job, you know, trying to do this, do this, here are my skills. He was like, look, we'll call you in a couple, in a week or so, call me, went from there, right? Uh, my next job in Atlanta, I actually didn't apply for that job. I, they, they reached out to me because of going to an NABJ convention. And I did an interview with somebody, and this is a this is two years later that they're like, "Hey, we saw your resume. We're starting up this new pilot situation here. We saw the skills that you had listed. We think you might be good for that." Um, going to Chicago, 
I went to News Nation, which was a brand new program. It had, did not exist. So again, did not apply for that job. <laughs> it just kind of became something that I was able to do. And then coming back here to Indianapolis, it's a position that did not exist. <laughs> uh, it was a situation where um, your network is what gets you the opportunities to see positions that don't actually exist. It's the uh, people that you connect with that are gonna be in spaces that may allow you to um, you know, find these types of roles and they know your skills so they can vouch for who you were. Every single place that I went to, these people, there was someone there who knew me from a previous experience who was like, okay, Brad fits this and this and this and this, let's get them in there Let's try it out. And then that's how that's that's kind of how it's gone for me. So to answer your question, I actually have not applied for a job that I've gotten in ever. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's it, it that is a total anomaly. I, that is that is not part of the course for anybody um, that I know. So I can't say that that's what's going to be your experience. But I'm oh, sorry. What's up? I just wanted to go off oh, I was going to say, I'm not going to say that's, any, that's going to be anybody else's experience, but what I am going to say is that when you guys graduate, like the jobs that you are even looking at now, probably you're going to have a different, like, responsibilities list by the time you graduate. Like, things just change so fast now um, that, that you are going to be seeing things that are going to be flexible in their, their responsibilities and stuff, so... One way you can apply for jobs that don't exist is by keeping up with what's happening. Like, Tegna has articles about, oh, well, we're moving towards this and this and this. If you're reading industry information, you get a chance to see where some companies and <coughs> some stations are going. It's like, hmm, they're not there yet. I can apply. Uh -huh. And I'm also one of those people, I, the only job I applied for in industry was my first job, and they didn't have any openings. They called me they, several months later. There it is. We're done. I haven't applied for another one. And other than by formality. I mean, I, I, yeah, right, by formality, because they need to do a background check. I'm clean, right? So. Uh, Ethan Allen, News of Indiana. So, um, as you've been mentioning, kind of a lot of different types of jobs in the media space, uh, like you said, don't say no kind of thing. Um, I saw you based on Ben Davis as a media teacher. Mm -hmm. Now, um, that's kind of, it is media, but it's a little different from your other jobs. How was that, and what was the decision making going into uh, doing that? Yeah, uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes you learn you're not good at everything. I, I, I'm not a good teacher. Like, I, 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 I liked the idea because at one point in time, I did crave a little bit more stability, right? Uh, one thing that you learn being in news is that like nine, the typical nine to five is non-existent. I mean, especially if you want to go in sports, I mean, your weekends are sports. Your off days are Tuesday and Wednesday because those are like those off days of sports, right? Um, or maybe it's split days. You get Tuesday, <coughs> Thursday or whatever it may be. Um, I've worked every, sh like right now, I, I literally got off of work this morning and came here because right now I'm filling in for an executive producer position that I don't have and because that falls under my leadership I need to be that person so I'm, I'm up at 12 30 in the morning every morning to be the morning show EP and then you know I pull it up here and then I'm probably gonna pass out by the time I get home you know what I mean that's the end of my day so um what but but to your to your question about being a teacher at Ben Davis uh I I love Ben Davis I love the west side I love I love my school and all that um I love y'all at this age. Do not love y'all at that age of 15, 16, and 17 years old. Um, so uh, that that experience was one that was, um, it was a great, I needed that experience because I needed to know that I also don't crave a, st a stable nine to five. I don't need nine to five to, to do whatever. Like, I actually do enjoy weird wake up times or wake you know being on night side and waking and coming into work at 3 p.m or 3 a.m or 6 a.m or whatever and just i like that flexibility and what it what it does for me so um again all love all love for the west side just just it wasn't my it's not my forte right hi 
idea of Ball State Daily News, you worked in a lot of different markets. What would you recommend as kind of like the key when you get into that market to kind of understand where you're at and what stories you're looking for? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, the number one thing that works in your uh, benefit, especially once you hit those, um, like if you guys start off in like smaller markets or mid markets, um, purchase a newspaper subscription. Uh, that is probably the number one thing that helped me out uh, when I moved to Atlanta. It's just to understand what people like. Now, granted, there are a lot of different opportunities now online for you to get into these like um, aggregated sites, these, you know, like Indie Hub, Indie Today, or in Atlanta, it was like uh, everything GA and, you know, ATL Scoop and all that. But like getting immersed in the culture of uh, the city that you want to work in is easier today than what it's ever been because you have essentially all of the content at your fingertips on, on social media. So um, that would be the very first thing I would do is just to, you know, <coughs> find those those different types of, of sites. Um, if you get a chance, like, take a field trip, take a weekend, just drive around the city, um, or if it's a walkable city, walk around the city, or, you know, whatever it may be, um, you know, figure out if the culture fits for you. Like, Chicago fits me a lot better than Atlanta did. Um, if I would have known, I mean, I still loved Atlanta and loved the opportunity, but, like, I'm, I'm a Midwest person, like, through and through. I need four seasons and snow and all of that, right? So Chicago was solid for me, and, and it fit what I liked more about people. It's not, I'm, not a, I'm not a big celebrity guy. Chicago is, like, the ultimate big city with non-celebrities, right, and, and regular people. So I like that. You learn that from being there. Um, when it comes down to the actual news aspect and, and learning the news, um, like I said, the newspaper is really important. If you get a chance uh, on that weekend that you visit, if you can watch the channels and see what they lead, don't watch the full newscast, just see what they lead their newscast with. If it is <coughs> a typical crime story, right? If it is a, this shooting happened here, you kind of know that you're going to be dealing with a city that focuses on spot news. If it bleeds, it leads. If they're doing more in-depth stuff, if they're doing more like digging and stuff like that, maybe you're dealing with a city that's more about political or, or environmental or social justice issues or whatever it may be, and they're, they're maybe a little different from, you know, talking about crime and stuff like that. So, like, get, get an idea of how they lead their newscasts. Of course, they're going to have everything in there, but what do they find to be the most important thing? The front page and that lead. Those are going to be the things that really help you determine how that city quantifies its news. So that's a great question. Nate Locker, Boston Sports Lake. Um, you know, you talk a lot about yourself being like a workhorse. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, you're passionate about what you do. Um, and kind of Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, I fell a lot. You're right. It fell a lot. I've had a number of times where I've had conversations with my mother, like, dude, I'm done with this. I am, I'm about to apply. I'm about to go to the post office and you know, deliver bill and call it a day. Cause it's, it really is one of those things. News is one of those things where it's like heavy as the crown, right? So if you are, you're responsible. You don't recognize how responsible you are for people's lives until you get a phone call from somebody because you misreported something about a family member. Right. You say the wrong thing about or you write the wrong thing. You you say, give the wrong name. Uh, I think a perfect example would be uh, recently taking a call from the brother of a man who was killed in a, um, a car collision. Right. <coughs> and the. You know, this is not a, well, this is, it's not to absolve any fault. The way that the information was given made it fairly vague. The story was written to say this person was driving this way and they hit this car 
and that was it. But then to hear a, a, a brother, and, and not just a brother, a grieving brother, someone who is clearly distraught, they've lost um, their heart, right? And they're telling you that is not what happened. You are wrong. You are you are this. You are you know, call you out your name. They'll, they'll, yeah, you're gonna get a lot of that regardless. You know, I mean, I've I've, I've before the fake news thing, it was fake news. So. Um, those are the hardest ones, and, and, and you, you know, you go through the process, you empathize, you, if you have to retract, you retract, or what, what's even, what's even worse is when someone's upset with you and they're wrong. And I've had numerous calls and numerous situations. Uh, the one that comes to mind was a young lady who was missing uh, in Atlanta and she had been missing for, I don't know, two days and her mother calls and she's like, why is this on the news? Why can't I find my baby? Da, 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 da. And I'm, you know, you're just listening and you're listening and you're taking it in and it sucks. And what made it wrong was that the young lady wasn't missing. She went to her father's house because she was trying to escape an abusive boyfriend. But what sucked even more was that the abusive boyfriend was with the mother when she called me, right? So it's a situation where she's acting as an agent for this girl, for this guy to bring this poor girl back home. <clears throat> I'm sorry, that's uh Whew. It sticks, stuff like that sticks with you. It does. You've already sticks with me. Uh, what was the story? Um, when I first graduated, it was, um, Sandy Hook sticks with me. Like, these are all things that you see and you see and you see. That type of stuff does stick with you. I'm gonna be just being very honest with y'all, so. I'm sorry, that's, I, oof, I was not expecting to, be emotion about ah. So yeah, uh, work ethic's not gonna get you through that. It's, it's just being honest, like it's not gonna get you through it. Um, good community's gonna get you through that. Uh, having a relationship with, I don't know. You're a religious person. It's your, it's your faith. Um, if it's your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters, it's your friends. It's that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's no no amount of work that there's no amount of work ethic that will save you from the plight of how terrible this world can be. It's just being honest. So. I do apologize. I must not have. I don't know. Not a very emotional person, but that, I don't know, that story has always gotten to me, so. Ugh. All right, somebody give me a happy question, please. Thank you. Uh, uh, great to be with Ball State Sports Link. Yeah. I was going to ask you, um, how do you separate your work life from your regular life uh -huh. when you can be so invested in what you're working on? Um, have, you got to have hobbies. Um, for me, it's, it's always, I've always had great friends. Um, that's probably also one of the harder things, especially when you go into these smaller markets, because unless your coworkers are your friends, you know, if you're out in Billings, Montana, there's not a lot of people that you're going to, you know what I mean, you're going to be kicking it with. So uh, um, having hobbies is really, really important because it's really easy to get down uh, when you're when you're bouncing around solo. Um, you know, if you have a relationship or you're married or whatever, maybe that can also help. But um, separating work and, and, and home is hard. Hard, or yeah, working home is hard in our industry because of how invested this is. This is a lifestyle. This is not a, you don't get to like, and I'm done for the day. Like you, you're kind of, you're kind of always near your phone. You're kind of always check, you know what I mean? Severe weather's happening. Okay, well, let me go outside, snap some pictures for y'all. Let me, you know, how can I help? Oh, I just heard 
this car crash down the street from my crib. Let me go find out what happened or whatever it is. Like you're always kind of paying attention. Um, but separating that is important because you do need your own personal life. You do need an opportunity to, to get away. So for me, it's always been, again, just having a good community, friends that want to go out and kick it, you know, let's go grab a drink. Let's, you know, let's go to the park. Let's play football. Let's do whatever. Uh, lots of, lots of, um, like uh, rec sports, like flag football, kickball, softball, stuff like that. If you're an athlete, uh, I just picked up learning how to play the bass guitar. Like, just find it. You, you gotta, you just gotta find hobbies. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, things that can put you at ease. You know what I mean? So, what else? In the back. Sorry, I got you next. Um, there are a couple, there are a couple, uh, I would say that for me, I always wanted to do this, man. Like I, it, it, it was always something I wanted to do. I got to do it in high school. I got to do it here. Um, yeah, I think probably the, the first time I got to go up in a helicopter, when I got to go up in a helicopter, I got to be like, like, Hank, hey, camera out i'm hanging out of a helicopter with a camera like that's that's some cool shit man like that, you can't you cannot top that type of a feeling um i would say that and then the super bowl in atlanta was where i was like yeah this is what i was supposed to be doing because that was a uh, that day started at five in the morning ended at two in the morning the next day it's the longest day of my life right all for like 40 seconds, right? Is it, <laughs> and it's all for the end of the game. We, you're watching the game from inside like a room like this with other media people. I still got my, but, but like you're going out, so we're doing post game at the end or whatever. So you're catching like everybody going out. And this is after a long week of like, again, media day and interviewing, like I said, different people and going to the Rolling Stone party and uh, doing this and doing that. This is the culmination of all that you got like two minutes on the field, get everything plugged in, make sure everything's good. I'm field producing. All right, we're done. Let me steal some of this confetti, you know, and then I'm out of here, right? So, um, but it, like I said, just a, a, a super long day. Um, also on the Super Bowl thing, one story I did want to, I just want to tell y'all this. When I talk about experiences, I had a friend, uh, we, we did the Rolling Stone red carpet. So I was, her photographer, she was just a digital person who did not say no. When I say do not say no, here's a perfect example of it. She came dressed for the part. It's the Rolling Stones party, right? Like this is A-list celebrities. This is every, every music act that you can think of is coming to this little small warehouse or whatever, right? So we're getting them through on the red carpet. She's shining in her, her bedazzled dress. She's just getting compliment after compliment, right? We're leaving. Not going into the actual party. We're just going to the red carpet, right? We're just, we're, we're leaving. The person at the front <coughs> desk, as we're going, like, girl, I love you. I love your bob. I love your dress. Da, da, da. You, came, you came ready like you was coming to the party. She's like, yeah, da, 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 no, maybe not. She was like, don't worry about it. Slipped her a, a wristband, right? But not a regular wristband. Not a GA wristband, not even a VIP wristband. A $10,000 wristband to the top. Like when I say like they got the tiers of VIP, she's in there with Rihanna and Jay-Z and Beyonce and like in that, I was not dressed for it. <laughs> I was not dressed for it. She knew, but she knew what she wanted to do and she didn't say no. Like this was this was her like eighth day in a row working. She was like, no, 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 this is what I want to do. I want to be in entertainment. I want to do all this. She was like, I'm going to do this red carpet. She popped in there. She put her best on, and she, yeah, she was up there. So again, like some of the best pictures of the Super Bowl weekend came from her phone. You know, what I mean, all because she was just in a position to to be ready. So uh, those are the things that make me like, damn, I, I love it. I, I love because the opportunities are always there. They're always there. So. Brian, so Jeff Paul, same sport. So you have a lot of news newsroom experience. Uh -huh. Talked about. You've worked in a variety of roles. So how 
I'm wondering what specifically about Ball State helps prepare you for all that. Chirp, chirp. Uh, it, everything. I mean, this is this is a premier program, and I, I hope you guys aren't taking for granted what you're getting an opportunity to do. I mean, even the fact that I got a mic on, and I feel like I'm a professor right now, right? Like this is this is. The, the, the state of the art equipment to the wealth of knowledge and the, the, the literal encyclopedias that you have as professors, the connections that they have, the type of people that they can get you to. And um, those are the, that's what makes Ball State so special. Like it is bar none best school here in Indiana for what you want to do. I would say, you know, look, you can have the academic stuff at Northwestern, you can have the academic stuff at Mizzou, I still think we put out the best ready graduates to do anything. So, yeah. Uh, Danny Huber, IPR News. As the director of innovation, mm -hmm. what do you see as the next innovations for the news industry and how do you apply yourself to those innovations? Yeah, uh, I gotta learn digital real quick because I think about five years, we're not gonna see like regular TV uh, five to seven years, so. Um, you know, learn digital, learn digital, learn digital. That's all I can say. Learn, learn shorts, learn how to, back to these, learn how to tell stories that matter to broad audiences in short amount of times. That is the, that is the key thing that I can say. You, you are watching the broadcast audience diminish uh, exponentially. You're watching the digital audience and the streaming audience grow exponentially. So put yourself in position for those things, learn about streaming, learn about OTT, learn about, you know, again, um, CMS, learn learn how things work together, so. Um. That is so well, Ball State Sports, like you said, you don't want to take a job in your career that already exists. Mm -hmm. What's your long-term goal? Like, what are you yep. looking at to go for in the future if it's not there already? Yeah, I'm definitely interested in media consulting in general. Um, and I think even past that, it's it's ownership. It's it's doing my own media, my own media company. Um, I would much rather do, um, you know, I, I I would much rather have my own narrative or my own my own propaganda to push, my own my own agenda to push. Uh, I'll say that uh, than to continue um, to go down the path of of you know doing things for for clicks, the rage bait, the you know, some of, some of the stories that you have to tell, especially once you get into like national and, and political and all that, it's, it's all, it's all agenda based. So, um, I'd rather tell the stories I want to, I want to be responsible for the stories I tell. Um, and I would love to do that with sports. I would love to do that with, um, you know, people, regular people. Right. I, I think those are the, that's, that's the way I want to go. I think to get there, the next position has to be some level of you know, management that also isn't there yet, um, or, 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 you know, a new media aspect in corporate or whatever it may be that's pushing us and strategizing towards whatever's next. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kayla Kern, Ball State Sports Link. Do you say that you're looking for reporters hungry to serve central Indiana? In mm -hmm. your opinion, what does this mean, and how would you say someone? Or how would you tell someone to achieve it? Yeah, sure. Um, if you want to tell stories in news, you have to care about your community. You got to care about people. That's that's the that's the simplest way I can put it. If you do not care about people, you will not be good at your job. Um, if you are not interested in the plight of your your fellow neighbor, if you have a neighbor right now that's trash is overflowing and it's always overflowing, and you don't bring that up as a problem to whomever needs to be bought up as a problem, that is not going to serve you when someone's coming to you to ask you to take care of that problem for somebody, right? It, you have to care about the problems that people have, right? And you have to then have the wisdom and the discernment to know when somebody's bullshitting you and when somebody's telling you an actual whatever. But it's it's to, to be hungry to tell the stories uh, in central Indiana, I think it's really just about how much can you care for people? How much how much empathy can you have? Um, how how can you tell the story of the chemical plant that's closing and the, the neighbors that are going to be affected that want to be upset about it? Can you listen to them without 
telling them that they're wrong or can you can you hear them out um can you can you hold can you hold your friend accountable if you can hold your friend accountable you know who else you can hold accountable public figures you can talk to the mayor you can talk to you know uh congressmen and state senators and whomever and governors and whomever it may be if you can hold people accountable um for the lesser man for the person who doesn't have a voice for your community uh if you can hold people accountable i think that that demonstrates a hunger um you know, to, to, to tell the stories of central Indiana or whatever community, central Pennsylvania, northern Indiana, Kentucky, Kentucky, Anna, wherever you want to go, you know, um, you know, there, there are stories to be told everywhere. So just immersing yourself in those communities um, and, and, and helping people where you can, I think. Maria Williams Hawkins, Media 110. When I announced that you were the incoming director of innovation to a former news person from Indianapolis, mm -hmm. they said, Great, what is that? There's money. No. Oh. Uh, he was very familiar with the job and told me there's money that he can use to advance different story ideas. I just want to know how can I tap into your access mm -hmm. to these funds <coughs> for my students? Hmm. Well, just call me. Just call me. No, uh, you know, um, part of it is I am, part of my job is to create a strategic plan to see how we can encourage you guys as the next generation of, uh, of journalists and making sure that, one, y'all know who we are, and then, two, we know who, who y'all are. Um, and... The, the most important thing is that now that this relationship has kind of blossomed and we've got not just myself, but, um, you know, Kyle Thomas, our assignment manager, Scott Hums, our director of content, uh, Matthew Wisner, um, who is our chief photographer. Uh, he's still there. Uh, Dustin, Gro these are all Ball State graduates, by the way. And I'm just, just tossing people out, right? Uh, Dustin Grove, 4 p.m. anchor, like these are all people who have sat in these same classes with the same professor they're doing the same things that I am, and we're trying to broaden our horizons to make sure that we are uh, getting students um, connected um, to the things they want. Like one of the things that I want you guys to utilize me for, if you have any interest in doing any level of producing, um, we have a, a producer and residence program that I have uh, successfully put uh, two of my own mentees through with Tegna, uh, where we essentially uh, start you off in a market of your choice, uh, if it's Indianapolis, if it's Tampa Bay, if it's Atlanta, if it's Washington DC, Denver, wherever we have a market, um, we set you up for a two year contract out of college and you learn how to be a producer. And then from there, you either sign on full time or you move to another market, right? It just kind of depends on where you are. We, um, one of my mentees um, who, again, not any work of me, just his own work and being a good, um, a steward of his time. He started off in Memphis, did 14 months there. I make it sound like it's jail. And then, <laughs> then he came, uh, and we hired him at, uh, at, at THR and he's, he does our, uh, our noon show. Um, now, um, we've had a pretty decent success rate of keeping people within the industry. Uh, and we have a great supporting, uh, support system, um, as well as mentors, um, that you'll be connected to. So again, if you have any interest of, becoming a producer and you also want to move to another city and you want to learn a new city, um, you know, definitely get my information so I can make sure that I can pass it along to the right uh, people with, with Tegna. And uh, when you graduate, we can definitely get you in as well as internships. Of course, there's always internships. I don't know what's the age range of here. We fresh, I mean, freshman through senior, any seniors, juniors, Couple juniors, cool. Yeah, talk to me, juniors. Soft, so rest freshman, sophomore, for the most part, cool. So definitely want to make sure that I have an opportunity to connect with all of you um, in in any way that I can. But uh, specifically those of you who are starting to think about your next steps, I want to make sure that I can be any type of asset that I can to help you get to where you want to get to. If it is uh, within local news, so um, or or sports. I mean, there there are opportunities within sports as well. So. We have time for a couple of people to ask questions who have not asked questions. I want you to have a chance to get on the board. Uh, Dee Dee Snyder, Ball State Media. Uh, you mentioned that you study people who are the best at what they did. 
and he specifically used sports as an example. Um, is there a significant risk or sacrifice you took for your career? And oh, yeah. People that are the best at what they do, they come with a lot of sacrifice and risk. Absolutely. Um, I've lost relationships over careers, uh, moving. It's, it, look, it, it's very hard to keep a relationship if you're going from Atlanta to Chicago to Indian. Like, I mean, let's be real. If you lived in Atlanta, do you really want to live in Indianapolis? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. You know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> or if you live in Chicago, do you want to live in Indianapolis? Maybe, maybe not. You know, it, it kind of depends on things. But, like, sometimes you, 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 run, you absolutely run the risk of losing um, different aspects. You, you know, I lost a lot of time with, like, my nephews. I don't get to see... I didn't get to see my nephew like grow up, grow up, because I've been gone for seven years. So he's 12 now. I was around a lot when he was a baby. Went a lot, around a lot, you know, in those kind of formative years where he kind of needed somebody to help push him and take him to practice and do the things that like my granddad used to do for me and stuff like that. So um, there's absolutely, absolutely sacrifice to moving around. There's, there's, there are, there are a lot of things that you lose when you choose yourself. <coughs> Tons of things that you're going to lose when you choose yourself. Uh, it is not for the weak. It's not for the weary. It's, it's you know, there's a lot that, that can happen. But, um, you know, for me, I, I think it's been worth it because I did come home. I, I, I do get to see them now, and I do get to go to those football games, and I get to be around my family and help people out and, and, and do stuff like that. So um, I, I think that the, the sacrifice, um, you know, returned great dividends in the end. You know, I didn't lose anything I couldn't, that wasn't for me. I'll say it like that. So, it's a good question. Yeah. Um, Brian Short, Long City Sports Link. Um, as a leader in the newsroom, how do you approach training and development with your team members to ensure that they have the skills and knowledge and are able to excel in those roles that they're in? That's a great question. I'm still learning that. Uh, that's, that's probably one of those things that's um forever evolving because everyone needs training in a different way right i was just listening to a clip from a uh, pittsburgh steelers coach mike tomlin uh, when he was on the pivot podcast and he talked about uh, how he loved uh coaching against coaches that hated actually coaching right uh Co he's like if someone he, he said he, he loved learning about somebody who would say you know if he's reading somebody's uh, draft profile and it says that he has uh, slow hands you're talking about offensive linemen or whatever he was like that's not a player problem that was a coaching problem and nobody took the time to actually develop them you know um, so that has been living in my mind rent free for like months right and trying to figure out what I can do to better coach, you you cannot, if you're a, a leader, you cannot get complacent with comfort. Uh, the more comfortable you are, the faster your skills are going to slack off. Um, you'll make room for excuses. You'll make room for um, all types of uh, undisciplined opportunities, right? So, um, I look at that, I have a hunger to get better at coaching and developing so that I'm continuously pushing um, my, my teammates, pushing my producers, pushing my executive producers to do their best. Um, because I'm gonna be honest, everybody just wanna go to work and go home. That, that's why I tell people, I say, hey, come to work. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, come to work, do your best, go home. The only three things I can ask of you, right? But it's that do your best part. It's a do your best part that kills 99% of us, right? We, and, and, and learning how to coach and develop through that uh, because there are days where you're not going to feel good. There are days when you got stuff going on at home. There's days where you just don't want to be there. You got whatever, you're not focused, whatever. Learning how to coach through that has been a great opportunity for me. Um, and I can't really give you like a, an answer. I, I don't have the solution or else I'd be rich and I wouldn't tell you because you know I mean? I'd be selling it. So. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity, though, to, to be able to learn stuff like that and learn how to continue to develop people um, that are hungry for that. So that's a great question. Any, anybody else? I know it's long. Uh, 